we're back! And now we know what the hell that footprint was, or at least I know what that was. Um, I told you all would be explained. It's a trap! <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this, that's exactly what I shouted. <laughs> so this is, um, uh, what was it? Appa's Lost Days, I think is what it was. The I, last days of Appa. Yes, the little <laughs> halo around him. The last temptation of Appa. <laughs> what do you will betray me? <laughs> so, yeah. uh... Wow, dark. <laughs> like, you, you think Eero's story in the previous one was dark? Holy crap. You know, I had a feeling going into this, I was like, okay, I think I know what this is going to be. This is going to be uh, a backtrack of all the stuff that happened while they were off having their adventures. And I was also saying, I bet this is going to be like... Uh, what was it? Land Before Time or American Tale, where it's just like, the more we can beat the shit out of this thing, the more you're gonna feel happy when he gets home. Except Jump you don't through the hoop! Jump through the flaming hoop! Except you don't even get to the point where he gets home! They draw it out even longer, so that's, you know, delightfully cruel. Um, but... Great I, commentary on animal cruelty. I was like, I'm like, I'm just like, I'm never going to a circus, ever. <laughs> like, holy shit. But, for me... So going in, that's always the thing where it's like that Avatar always sort of throws me for a little bit of a loop is that you think from the beginning of the episode, okay, I got this one figured out. And for the most part, I kind of did until he got to that guru, um, the person that's just sort of laying there, I guess had a vision or a dream that he's supposed to help the Avatar. We know nothing else about him. I'd actually be fine if we never do find anything else about him. Like, you know, what? this is his only appearance. Like, I'd be cool, like, because it was actually very, uh... Yeah, wait for, for it. That happens once or twice for, with other for, characters. For, for, the <laughs> little, for the little that they had him there, I thought it was actually very effective, but, uh... It, it felt like, here's a creature that's gone through so much. I love the line when the guru says, "Your so much of your trust has now been replaced with fear, and we have to work on that. I like that. I thought that, that was a very poignant line. And I like how... These humans work the same way. I, yeah, well, exactly. The, the visual of... And of, they realize this, the visual of Appa when he's, I think when he meets up with, a, what was it, Suki? Is that her name? Um, yes. The, the warrior girl. Uh, when, when he meets up with her and he is just so, I mean, he's dirty, he's got spikes all over him and he's got bruises, he's got chains on and stuff like that. And those images I always think are so good because you know that, again, when you get to the point where he's gonna return home or he's gonna be clean against them. it's gonna feel so good and i think yeah. it's the same thing in the meantime to... though it's well harsh well and i think it has to have was that like harshness. jesus christ show <laughs> you have to have that harshness for when he does get to the guru, the guru i agree the guru really has to see yeah. what he's been through and can show just how difficult the healing process yeah, the, is to get the, the show didn't pull any punches like uh, and i respect that because it's like no, we're really going to torture the hell out of this animal so that, you know, that's why I think it works. I think, you know, adults can be just douchebags and, you know, what can you do about that? But I think sometimes kids don't realize when they're just picking on an animal or just what they think is having fun. You can mess an animal up pretty easily. Yeah, oh um, yeah. Well, I, I, hate it, stuff, I hate it when people get to... pets for their toddlers or something, and I'm just like, oh my god. Like, no, don't. I don't get a kitten for your three-year-old. doesn't work that way. Well, and then people are always so shy when they go to a shelter. Like, why is this dog so angry? It's like, you know, exactly. Like, they've come from a family. Yeah. There are people that have just abused it, have not cared about it, and know what they expect it just to go back to normal. what you're doing when you get an animal. That includes adopting an animal who may have been previously abused, and that includes bringing an animal into your home with children who may not know better. Mm -hmm. I mean, the well, more you know. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, that there's our little lesson for the day. Um, and I'm trying to think, oh, we, some good fighting with the three... Uh, we, we should come up with a name for them. What, what, the, 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 Dar, the evil Daria trio. The, <laughs> the Daria trio, yeah. <laughs> the, the Azula and, and the gymnast and the bored girl. That's always The trio of awesomeness. <laughs> um, and... 
you know, you have a nice fight there. But what I like, what I got out of this, even more than, like, the animal cruelty commentary, I got Frankenstein. Because I got everything he comes across, every person he comes across, just somehow, even the ones that want to help him, like, even Zuki has to, like, get the fire and say, No! Go away! Go away! Yeah. Like, I thought you were my friend! Now you're trying to burn me! What the hell? Oh, uh, that Nothing scene was so cruel. Me. I'm uh, Yeah, I'm like, no, I know why you're doing it, Suki, but can't this damn bison <laughs> catch a break? Why couldn't yeah. they get on the bikes and then fly off? I sort of question that a bit, but... Um, Oh, but but I think that makes the scene all the more effective when they get to the. Guru. I don't know. Was he that trusting at that point? Maybe she. No, he was. No, no, she helped him. I mean, you know, she helped. Well, you could argue they couldn't get on top of him in time because Azula and the R two were right there. He could have been weak too. We don't know how much he could have carried. Um, I guess, but. Well, regardless, I think when he maybe gets, Suki's an idiot. <laughs> when when he gets to the guru and he's laying down, and I like that he can't even get up without him growling, and he has to wait it out. Uh, I thought that you know, like literally the whole day until he's asleep, and I really like he has to do that a couple times. He can't actually go up and touch him until he's asleep, so he has to wait two days in a row to do that. Uh, so I I thought again, it just shows the distrust that has been built in him. And as I think I was telling you ahead of time, because you, you hated the episode um, where Aang hides the uh, the, the, the message, the father, yeah, yeah. The, from the father. Um, it, it was not one of my favorite episodes either. I think I was a little more accepting of it than you were, but I'm like, yeah, it was kind of handled sloppily, but I know what they were going for. Aang's afraid. He's the hundred years of being alone. Now he's going to lose his only friends, but you're right. It was kind of... They kind of really just threw as it in your face leaves, quickly. Oh, like, but we need to stick with our friend. Oh, he happened to yeah. be out there. I it's it's so. it should have been like maybe two episodes where he could have dragged it a little bit and not been as so hokey. But so I was giving you the warning because um, I was like, yeah, Aang's gonna go a little douchey again. You know, his friend. But it's justified here. It felt you know, right. It, it's justified. But the first time I saw it, I actually the funny thing is I had less trouble with. The episode you were talking about in the first season than I did with this one, and I, I thought overall it was justified, but I still was like, man, like, Toph pretty much blew out her muscles, you know, trying to hold the tower up, and, and they're all trying to help, and he's just, you know, Aang's just pretty much like, shut up! I'm gonna leave you to starve in the desert so I can, you know, hop on my glider and find, you know, Appa. Um, that's the point where I started to lose, it's like, I know you really care about Appa, but um, they can die. <laughs> But, so, I, the one thing is, so I said, you know, warning, I, I, Aang's gonna get a little douchey again as he works through this. But And yes, to some degree it is justified. I got through it, I was patient with it because this was a part of the series I had not seen yet. And this episode is the payoff. This is such a payoff to putting up with Aang sort of, you know, being... So kind of jerky to his friends because he's upset about Appa because now you see what Appa went through and why Aang is so terrified and pissed off and being a jerk and he's like, you guys don't get it. Uh, I would you know, say I, I thought the payoff for that was really, really great in a way that I think in others, I think a cheap animation would have just had, oh, Appa gets into a little trouble and he's found in this and that. But I think to see that torture, I you get why Aang's so upset. Even before seeing this episode, though, because that Aang, Aang, everything Aang is doing still feels uh, like emotionally it was building on top of each other because you have a kid who feels this great guilt from, you know, for going and leaving for a hundred years, and then he comes back all this misery, so he already feels like that's his fault. But now you have pretty much his oldest friend, even if it is a pet, is taken away, and not only is he taken away, but he was responsible for him. And he is directly responsible for him, and now he is gone, and he could not take care of him, and I think that's even something worse than when he goes inside the giant, he puts the ice cube around him, because like I said, it, stuff happens when he disappears. This is someone he was directly responsible for, and... Well, and you do find out later up. that the airbenders have a real connection with their bison. Um, they're basically, yeah, like childhood friends and stuff. And so I I get it. And I, I guess the only thing we're lost is where he's just like, well, have fun fending in the desert for yourself. And I'm like... You know, needs of the many, needs of the one. <laughs> but no, I but I can see him. But, and I know like, what you're no, gonna I say. I can't lose him too. I, I know. It's like I know what you're gonna everyone. say. And I you're gonna pull the too. he's a kid card. No, not not that he's a kid kid card. That he has 
you know, the responsibility of him has lost so many people and, and it's had a war happen and he wasn't there for it. And granted, he has new friends now, but now it's like the only creature that he made a connection to long ago, the only connection to that past, and he was responsible for, is gone. And he wants to say to himself, no, I, okay, so, I will fix this. So I will not enough. let this happen. So, fair enough. A bunch of people died because I went into the ice. So my newfound friends that I am so desperate to hold on to that I lie about their father... Now I'm going to say they can starve in the desert because well, the father thing is still advice. bullshit. But I know. But well, first of all, you know he can come back and he does come back. But second, he does come back. Like, but I'll tell again, you, watching the, it, I was like, I hope he can find him because it was like, holy shit. No, but I mean, the, the emotions take him over so much that he has to go and search because you can see him just saying, no, I can't lose him too. Like that was an actual creature I was responsible for. It. It's one of the few times where. For a show, I think that normally sets a really good example for kids. It's one of the borderline moments I'm like, I'm not sure that's the message I want to send to a bunch of kids. Like, well, okay, if you're going to go your that friends route, in the you know, I mean, fair enough. Again, but they when spent it's two also, episodes to analyze it, yes. though, and say maybe and that was I will the say right this thing. when it's all said and done, that's why I think the payoff is worth it. Because when you see what Apple went through, you, you get it. Like, there is a payoff, which is. You see that Appa is in real danger. It's not just that, oh, Appa's going to be sold to, you know, some other owner and maybe he's going to have a nice life. It's like, no. Well, that's... he's the last of these creatures, too. I mean... See, yeah, I guess he is. So, yeah, I mean, so Appa's I mean... nearly going to die because of this. And I think that's an immense payoff for something that, at least for me, I was kind of like, I'm tolerating this and I still think it's okay. But it's definitely some of the harder episodes to get through because I'm like, Manning, they're just trying to help. <laughs> like... Well, I mean, yeah, and I, I saw the they're emotional not being, yeah, they're in not, him. They're I, not I, I being Homer fear. Simpson and just like, you know, maybe we can get you a new bison. <laughs> like, you know, it's... I think for him, if he really lost Appa and found out that Appa was, like, dead or gone, I mean, for him, it'd be like, okay, I I have failed everything, like, I have stood for. I, there is nothing I can I take agree. care of. There and as I said, I, I think overall it works. And I'm saying that it works because of this episode. If Appa did not go through anything harsh as a result of this, I would look back on those episodes of Aang just leaving his friends in the desert and then going, yeah, kind of a dick move. Like, I know you're upset, but... I I see it a little more, but at the same time, yeah, it, it's a good episode to have. Uh, I like, again, that they add a little bit more instead of just him suffering and getting back i like him coming across the guru i, I just feel something about that part to me elevated it a little beyond well, just they the that, suffering they and that getting message home. i i think that's one of the best lines that's one of the best lines in the entire show like in your top 20 lines or whatever that one about like you've replaced trust with fear mm -hmm. this is the one of the best written lines in any show. Well, and not not seen. just for animals. I mean, like like you said, just just for people. Well, there's so many people that come out. Of well, that's why it works. I mean, well, again, or, or just, just like the Uncle Eero episode, I was saying that is the center of it. This is another example where that one line could you could argue is one of the centers of the entire show because how many characters in the show are operating on that level? Mm. You know, that is Zuko's entire story. You replace trust with fear. You know, so many of the characters, all the struggles they go through, you've replaced trust with fear. Aang does the same thing, you know, in many cases. I, you know, I would argue even that Aang getting up and leaving his friends behind in the desert was replacing trust with fear. Yeah. You know, maybe he should have trusted that maybe he'll be able to find him later, but instead his fear drove yeah, him away from his friends. So, yeah. as I said, I think it works. It's just, you have to kind of put up with it because I was like... Wow, Aang. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> damn, um, Aang. Damn. <laughs> damn. Uh, but, you know, it works because of that payoff, and that central theme in this episode, I think, connects it together. So I, I am saying it works. Okay, I mean, yeah, so there you go. Uh, yeah, just another good episode. <laughs> uh, curious what... Poor Alba. Poor curi Suki. Curious what... Uh, weird, demented bossing say <laughs> is up to now because that place creeps me out. When I heard tales oh, of the bossing tour, say, the tour guides, yeah, yeah I, I thought tales like, of bossing say was, was going to be like be the like scary a episode, yeah. like a tales from the crypt or something. Because <laughs> I was like, this place is scary. No, the whole. <laughs> I, 
I love the tour guides. I just, it's those plastic smiles. Just, welcome to Passing Say. Oh, you <laughs> did like, your job? Uh, it's like, where, where, where's Judy? No, this is Judy now. That's not Judy. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm new Judy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that whole Manchurian candidate thing they've got going on here is just <laughs> freaky. Yeah, I, I thought it was great. So, so very cool. Well, that's this episode, and uh, I'm sure you'll see him in the future. You'll definitely see me in the future. Maybe. Uh, until the future. <laughs>